Okay, so I want to make something very clear. Emily is a really easy character to understand and it does not take much. There is a lot of confusion, you know, going on that Emily is sort of a burning damage dealer. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that that is not the case. Emily, which is going to be in the banners very, very soon, is actually a character that deals sub DPS dandro damage and the only part that comes into play from burning is that emily buffs herself from burning basically what that means is that once the burning reaction has initiated the dandro damage that she does with her lumidos case increases and that's because of her passive talent pretty much that's it and of course, with her unfinished reverie set, you get that effect as well. Now, that is the basic, basic premise of Emily. And that is how you should be understanding how Emily works. She's not a character that buffs burning. She's not a character that makes burning a good reaction. Character that makes burning a worthwhile reaction so she can do more damage. That's it. That's all. That, that's it. You only do burning for Emily to do more damage. That is the basic premise. So if you want Emily to deal lots of damage, you're going to need to do burning. That is the easiest way to think about it. So if you're going to use a character like Nahida C2, where you can crit those reactions or burning, it's just not, it's just not there. Okay, that's not what it's supposed to happen. That's not how Emily's supposed to work. If you want Emily to just deal more damage, you have that burning reaction. That is it. You don't need to overcomplicate how Emily works. The only reason why people might think, oh yeah, she's a burning character. Well, yes, but also at the same time, not exactly. So if I go to my Yaga here, which is my place holder for, or holder for Emily at this moment in time. Um, yeah, the unfinished reverie set. This is where it gets confusing to some of the people because this is what people say is the best in slot set. I say the same thing as well because it's pretty obvious. Because you are increasing your damage dealt by 50% here for burning characters, because without burning, you're losing out on this damage, people think Emily equals burning. And the only way where Emily equals burning is to increase her own damage, not to increase burning damage. That should be the simplest way for me to try to make it as obvious as possible. So if you want to use a different artifact set, you're like, oh, okay, so does that mean that burning still works? Of course it does. Of course burning still works because in her own kit, you get a buff for burning, an attack percentage buff, which is really nice. And her weapon also gives her an attack increase. And if you there are burning characters on the field or something like that, you also get another uh, damage increase from that. That is why people say she is a quote unquote burning character when initially all you need to know is that the reason why you want to burn is so Emily does more damage. Very, very simple. Don't overcomplicate the character. The teams are still viable. The melt burn teams, the those still work. Okay, you don't have to be like, oh, well, that's not how Emily works. Well, it, it, it is. It is how Emily works. Emily does work with burning because that is her reaction that helps her do more damage. Does not make burning do more damage. You see what I'm getting at here? If you want burning to do more damage, you can just, you know, get some element mastery in there. You know what I'm saying? Have sucrose in there and maybe you can get some insane burning damage reaction. You know what I'm saying? But that is... Not what I'm trying to, you know, make sure you guys know. I'm just making sure you guys know that Emily, Emily's kit does not mean that burning does more damage, but rather that Emily, her own dendro damage does more damage. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys, uh, you know, got something out of it. I'm going to be reacting to the character teaser for Emily. So stay tuned, watch the whole thing, and I'll see you guys uh, in the next video very soon. All right, we're reacting to Emily's teaser, Personal all testimony. Let's uh, see. Fruity aromas express a yearning for youthful vigor, while notes of mm -hmm. cedar and amber show a desire to appear mature. And the Perfume. fades with dilution, evaporation, and aging, 
So long as you filter out the impurities to remove with the pure enemies, water, the <laughs> will still tell its story. <laughs> Sorry. The top note is citrus and tea leaves with neroli and roses mm. coming through in the middle note. Leaves smell nice. Woody base note. Say that. A very heavy fragrance with great longevity. Mm -hmm. Rather on the expensive side. Of course. Rest in peace. Huh? Perfume can tell you a lot. Even when the wearer can uh -oh. never speak for themselves. to go camping up on the summit but when i got up there i couldn't find her she are you are you gonna give them a perfume to like remember by that's her friend's statement what do you make of it it's unusual to meet at the summit especially for someone who's never been mountain climbing before mm -hmm. the claim that she fell is a lie wait is she a detective or what There was no sweat among the impurities present, and no lady in their right mind would apply such a heavy fragrance before a climb. What? The... Is uh? Fragrance. Hey, I thought she was some sort of like perfume connoisseur. Um, is... she's a detective, <laughs> or I don't know, detective's consultant. I mean, we got Shabris here. I mean, that's actually pretty interesting that the oh wait no what do you what do you call those individuals um i find stuff on the crime scene forensics right friend yes forensic scientist damn i've been I've been thinking about that word for a while okay yeah so she's like a forensic scientist type situation and that's why she has perfume um uh, i don't know but Definitely interesting. Definitely.